I met Michael a couple of times and he he was he was very interested in my chin. Really? And then three years later it looked like he had it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here's my thing about hats. You know, you know, gentlemen used to wear gentlemen used to wear hats, right? Yeah. Did you know who killed the hat industry? Uh hold on. It happened overnight. Uh was it JFK? It was. Yeah. It was. He showed up to that inaugural in the freezing, freezing, freezing. And his thing, his thing was like, I've got great hair. Got Why great would hair. I ever, ever wear a hat? I have fucking horrible hair. Mm, I'm losing know? it. I'm thinking about getting hair transplants. Why are you thinking? I don't know. Leanne likes it. I have a friend who goes, uh, he was losing his hair and uh, edit his name out. Mm. And I said, are you going to get hair transplants? He goes, no, I'm going to go bald like a man. And well, I, there's that. It, it was the coolest statement I've ever heard. And I was like, I wouldn't mind going bald like a bald man. Like a man is pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. Like you look at the old, what are the best bald actors? Yeah. But best bald actor? Best bald actors. You got Gene Hackman was a great bald man. Was was he considered? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Hair Robert challenged. Duvall. Oh, well, he, he he like he rocked. See, here's the thing. I don't want to go, I don't want to if I go bald, I still want to have a lot of hair. That looks like you know what I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to go bald with hair. I understand. I don't want to just shave my head. Oh, okay, that's a whole different thing. Once you shave your head, the only move you have is to wear fancy glasses. Mm. Every fat guy does it. Every bald guy, not fat guy. Do they <laughs> actually that's, bald and fat? Bald fat guys bald. they go with glasses. Robert Kelly and Tom Segura. They, they get they get the glasses. Yeah, they turn into these guys that wears like crazy glasses, and then that's well, their look. Well, what about your if you're Travolta, who you know wore wigs forever. And then finally, you know, in the last two or three years, it's like, I'm done. Oh, yeah. He's, those were wigs. I always thought it was transplants. They might have been that too, but the, he would wear wigs like hats though. Like he would, the thing that always made me laugh is, because he clearly did, he's the, by the way, have you ever met John? He's the best. No. He's the absolute, he's one of my favorite people and one of my favorite actors of all time. But he would wear, he would go in like, good morning, America. That's the morning. Yeah. And he'd have like a Caesar. And then you'd see him on the Tonight Show. Same day with like a Lord Fauntleroy. Fucking love And you'd this. be like, wait, he knows like what? Yeah, he yeah. just didn't care. I sprinkle my hair in sometimes. Like I'll put the topics to cover. Yeah, just topics. Only only because I get like, it bothers me. It doesn't bother anyone else. I don't think anyone else notices the way it bothers me. I remember the first time I saw myself losing my hair. 2000 and 2000, I was on the X show and they did a, they had a, what, what's the crane camera? Yes, the boom, the boom, boom crane. And showed you the top. And then showed me the top and I went, what the fuck? And my director was like, no one sees that though. He's like, I don't even notice it. And I was like, yeah, but I see it. Mm. He was like, well, it's the beginning of the end. It's the crazy thing. It's because I start wondering, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with this theory that uh, rea- perception is reality. So if you change your perception of things and then you can allow that to be a reality. So like if you are, overweight but you like what you look like then you're happy right yeah so like like 100%. So if i can change my perception of liking what i look like without hair then what do i care what I, no one cares no one cares I mean, you have such perfect fucking hair i it's almost a hate crime for you to even talk to me about hair i it's, it's a hate crime God. i i'm i'm blessed i got but, but but you know they say it's genetic my dad has good ish hair yeah he's got receding and a little bit but, you know my grandpa this hits your mother's side is what this is what I've been oh, told. Oh, if that's it, I should be dead already. Like yeah, he, I mean, he, and he I should bald be bald. And died at like 43 under a Christmas tree. Uh, under a Christmas tree? Yeah. It's Electrocuted? Under Christmas tree. No, stroke. <laughs> if you're going to go, this is the bleakest story. Worst, it's the worst. What could be worse? Worst Christmas present That's ever. the worst. <laughs> it's dead the father. bleakest. They <laughs> you found know him. it's got to be a joke. You think it's a joke at first. You're like, oh, look at this fucking joker. And then you're like, he's not, he's really committed. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, look, he's a present. <laughs> no, it's the saddest. Wait, do you, you're, you're an empty nester, right? Yeah. So what did Christmas, do the kids come home for Christmas? Yes. Yes, they do. And, and it's great. But you know, what I'm now worried about is when they get a significant other and then you've got to negotiate. Yeah. Where it'll be like, well, we're going to. Oh, that won't happen. No, that won't happen with me. I'll be very clear. My children are coming to my house. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Great. That I will be, I you, will be a, or here's your option. Mm-hmm. I said this once to a flight attendant flying into South Africa, or I can drink my face off, take a Xanax and show up at your place and we can have a fucking problem on our hands. I love that. Yeah. 
I said that to a flight attendant in South Africa. We were flying to South Africa. And he's like, oh, okay. I'm bad at accents. He's like, okay, buddy. I'm going to have to cut you off. And I was like, all right, hold on. We're over Morocco right now. We got a lot of time left in this flight. I said, here's the deal. I go, listen, I have a fear of flying. And I will be totally cool if I can drink beer. Or I have a Xanax in my bag. And I can take that. And we can have a problem on our hands. It's up to you. You let me know what I'm going to do. And the guy just froze. He was like, one beer every hour. And I went, cool. One beer every hour. Yeah. So I drank one beer every hour. And I Why Rob, you- I have never savored a beer more. I've never enjoyed a beer more than that one hour beer I got where I just was like, and we had like seven more hours in our flight. Seven more beers. You got to make them last. You why know, didn't, you, I, I why passed, didn't you just go to sleep? I passed out. I passed out after like three more beers. And then I woke up and there was a fresh one waiting for me. And I was like, that guy's solid. <laughs> That guy's so fucking cool. He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. I love, uh, is there a a thing you miss drinking to? Oh, yeah. Like, what's your thing that you go, that would be a cool thing to drink to? Um, uh, Dodger Stadium day game. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck me. Your interview with goddamn Rich Eisen was so fucking good. Really? I didn't, it was so good. I listened to the whole thing. I I didn't, and I never listen to Rich's interviews. They're so tedious. The... (laughs) Give me, give me a rich eye. Give me a, a rich eyes and tedious rich eyes. No, I'm uh, kidding. I love rich. Okay, Can okay. I tell you what's great about rich? Mm-hmm. I love Tom that. and I go on to promote our vodka during the Super Bowl, yeah. and Gronk and Julian Edelman walk in, and then I go, "Can we hang out?" And he's like, "Yeah." And then uh, who's Ke- Ke- Paisley? Brad Paisley? Yeah. Is that is he a guy? Yeah, yeah. He Big showed up him. right. He's or Kenny Chesney. I'm sorry, Kenny Chesney, right. the bald guy. Yes, Chesney. Kenny Chesney walked up, and and Rich didn't kick us out, and then. Gronk got everyone to do shots of vodka with, out of the bottle and Kenny Chess to eight, eight in the morning and everyone's shooting vodka and it was like the funnest time. Oh, that's great. He's yeah. a, a fun hangover there. He's, he's, he's good. He's got a great, and he's kind of been doing what we're doing in podcasting for a long time. That's right. Like he's created that, TV always fucks up the the hang energy. Oh God. They They'd, overproduce it. it. Everything's overproduced. I mean, I remember the time when all of a sudden you would go on a talk show and you had to play a game. Like overnight, it was like, we don't really give a shit what you have to say about anything. We yeah. don't really even care if you're on the show. What we're really interested in is seeing you play pin the tail on the donkey with Ellen or whatever. It's like, can I just be me? Is that, I mean, can yeah. I, is, is there any world where I, I don't have to get in a go-kart? It's What sucks is the un- unoriginal <laughs> I would do so much better on late night if I just did a potato sack race <laughs> other than tell my stupid story. No, we want to hear you talk. I'm better, but I'm better. I'm really, I'm not great. Wait, I'm, I'm, been... I'm going to cigars. Oh, please. I'm moving to cigars. I got a cutter here. Okay. No, wait, wait, or you could be a man and just bite it. I can, buddy, I grew up in Florida. Yeah, you, well, I, my, my fucking. You have to take your time. I got the and, then, and then you got to do the Hawk Tui girl thing. Mm. You, know, you know, I do know who she is. Because <laughs> I'm really, I'm I'm abreast of everything that's I met a, knowing. I met a Native American from the Hawk Tui Nation <laughs> who uh, was, apparently it's like a group of people. There's no such thing. Hawk Tui Nation? <laughs> there is not Hawk Tui Nation. <laughs> they would spit on their arrows before they... <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you I identify with her so much? I have a lot of thoughts about her. Really? Oh, yeah. Let's hear them. How could you not? I well. How, how could you not have thoughts? Well, because, okay. By the way, my wife is so horrified that I know about things like this. And even my kids are kind of horrified. Oh, I... Uh, I don't think it fits their image of what a dad should be. And I'm like, you know what? I need to know what's going on in the world. I think it's important. Well, she is a, a fascinating study of, of everyone's wants and needs. Because everyone will tell you. Explain more. I'm going to be Freud now with my cigar. Explain more. Everyone will tell you it's gross to want to be famous or to want to be rich. You should be humble and that is the thing. But then when you get the opportunity to be famous and rich, everyone will jump at it in a fucking heartbeat (laughs) and do whatever they can to get it and not be, and I'm no slight on her, but she's famous for spitting on a cock. And so like, it's not like it's not like the most noble profession. It's no. not the most, most noble business card to hand forward to someone. But and everyone's and then you watch what I fucking fascinated about is then you watch people tearing her down. 
It's like people love to put you up here right. and they loved it. That is such a natural cycle that, and I identify with her so much because I was in Rolling Stone magazine in 1997 and it started my career and I feel, I know, and I had no talent. I shit on a pizza box. Like she just, she was at least funny. I shit on a pizza box to win an election. And I believed in myself and I was like, I'm going to move to New York. And get, and there were people that looked at me the way people look at the Hoktua girl and go, yeah, good fucking luck, honey. Good luck, buddy. And I was like, no, but this is what I want. And if she wants it, I root for her so much. And by the way, even if she doesn't want it, I root for her. Even if she just wants to have fun for fucking eight months and, yeah. have, and go to every concert she's ever wanted to go to and fucking meet every famous person she's ever wanted to meet and fucking have some fun, fly on a private jet, do all that shit, then let her do that. I think that's fucking awesome. No, it, it's... We passed my lighter? Yeah. Um, I agree. And I, I'm also... And I'm glad that you said this because my initial thing was like, okay, so you get a team, you're going to roll yourself out, you're going to try to make something of this accidental viral moment, which there's a lot of ways you could go, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a world in which it's OnlyFans. So I, I mean, if, if, if I was her business manager? If it was about money. She's, she's from a small town. But like, she's not going there. She's going like, she looks like she wants to be Martha Stewart. I mean, it's very like lofty. It's interesting. I'm like, okay. I mean, that's a, you've set a steep ladder to climb, but. It's a good brand name. Huck Tua is a good brand name. Like if you were going to name like a, like a disc golf or like a backpack, the Huck Tua backpack. Like it, it, it's, it's like North Face. It's got two things to it. North Face. Huck and, Tua. It's, and it's got an indigenous feel. Like if she sold Huck Tua rugs, <laughs> like Huck Tua, like, like face paint. Like, I don't know. See, this is the thing. We like. This is probably why they wanted me to play games and sack races <laughs> because I would inevitably be talking about the Hawk Tui girl on Good Morning America. It's and they refreshing. Would, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't like it's it. It's refreshing to know that she ends up in your feed because she's in my feed. My, I'm always a, I'm always shocked that people have what I get in my feed in their feed. Mm -hmm. And in your feed, I, I would never think, I would think it would be like noble things. Like you'd be looking at steeds or something or like. Steeds. Yeah, like, or like uh, I, I have a vision of you enjoying uh, polo. I, I, I'm not adverse. I'm not adverse to polo. Yeah. I've never done it. i have actually, I take that back. I've totally played polo. A polo is sick sport. It's crazy. It's really, it's, it's spectacular. But, um, but, but it's the, refreshing to know that you land on the hawk to a girl as well. Well, the algorithm knows something about me that I don't even know about myself. Really? For sure. I mean, it, it, it does. I mean, my stuff is a lot of like really absurdist comedy. Like I'm a big fan of this guy, Mr. Chicken. Do you know Mr. Chicken? No. Please pull up Mr. Chicken. Mr. Chicken is literally, you know, the, the rubber chicken with with the yeah, mouth. Yeah. They go, ah, 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 who sings songs. So he'll sing like, he'll sing like, you know, on the way over here, Mr. Chicken was doing uh, uh, a journey. It was doing, um, when the lights go down in the city. Journey, but yeah. in a chicken voice. That's all it is. Stupid. Wait, I, I, Stupid. Really I feel funny. like I feel like when the first time people explained email to me. Yeah, you like, don't understand it. I'm like, I, I understand. I know what you're saying. Do you know about hanging with Doctor Zayas? No. So I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, um, you know, a Planet of the Apes fan. And there's a comedian whose name I should know. You probably do because you know everybody, and the comedian uh, culture is very small. But his bit is he dresses up like Doctor Zayas from Planet of the Apes. Full, full costume, and then talks like that person's a real actor. He's like, after I finished doing Apes, I had the opportunity to work with Chuck Heston again in a Sergio Leone movie. Uh, it didn't do anything at the box office. But it's, and he does like old school inside Hollywood stuff. It's yeah. so funny. Can you pull any of these up, Chris? Yeah, <laughs> Hanging with Dr. Zayas. Hanging is, with Dr. Zayas. I is, gotta fucking see Is really this. the original one where it's, he now has kind of a show but I, Dana Gould. It's Dana Gould that does it? Dana Gould. He is fucking brilliant. It's Dana Gould, who I don't know, but I only know him as- You Dana. don't know Dana Gould? No. Dana Gould is one of the funniest fucking dudes to ever live. Uh, okay. He is one of the funniest fucking note guys. note to Team Low. I need to be on Hanging with Dr. Sam. From deep in the heart of the I, I'm, I'm working my uh, way. Of course it's Dana Gould. With Dr. Z. But see, I don't Tonight, love the, the, the produ Weber, overproduced version as much as I love. There's Steel versions where he's Steel sitting by his pool. This monkey means Like literally you can tell he did it in his backyard. And then it became a thing. Doctor, see, I like we'll it before it became a thing. It's perfectly Hello. fine. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank proud. you very much. That video was pretty good. Welcome to the show. You're watching Hanging with Dr. Z, and I'm Dr. Z. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels over funny. there. We have Rusty Steel and the Steel Wheels over there. Sleep. Right? I finally did get a good night's sleep. I tried a new it's technique, good. which really worked for me. Well, what's that? Uh, we with Dr. Zayas is good. This is great. Yeah, see? So, okay, so my you know algorithm is a little dog? more nuanced, I think. Uh, I get obsessed with weird things. Like right now, one of my obsessions are um, lower income wives who make meals for their husbands. Trad wives? What? Is it the trad wife? What's thing? a trad wife? Oh, the Wait, what are you talking about? See, on my algorithm, it's the same. But it's the, called the trad wife, and it's all right. Don't ever. It got real quiet in here. Like no, I'm a crazy person. Trad wife sounds like a like a kink. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's trad not. Wife. It's it's short for traditional wives, but it's like I, just explore trad wives. Just okay. trust me on this. So I get traditional I, wives. Trad wives. Yeah. So these it's are a thing. Trad, trad wives. Wife trend. No, click it. Trad oh, wives. Fuck, you're gonna fuck me up. The trad wife club. Go there, go there, go there. Trend my phone. It sounds like it's kind of a swingers thing. It's not. I think my thing. I think my thing on Instagram that I get really fascinated goes back to the Hoktua girl. Is there are these people who are are creating a brand mm -hmm. without any, and I mean this with respect. Everyone's just as good as anyone, but without any traditional media upbringing, any media training, no marketing training, but they're doing what they've seen work for other people on the internet. So then they create their brand and they do their Instagram and it's, and it's fascinating to me because it, it, you know, there's an, uh, this is going to come off wrong, wrong, but there's an earnestness that comes with our shallowness with acknowledging that we want to be in front of a microphone. We want to put on makeup. We want to get into in front of the movie. We want to be in front of the camera. We've wanted that for a very long time. There's an earnestness with that, that I think some people mock. And then when you see that everyone now has an opportunity to do it, everyone's jumping at it. Everyone, I mean, it's kind of crazy how many kids I at, talk to and I go, what do you want to do when you grow up? And they go, get a YouTube page. And you're like, what? And my question would be, and put what on it? So that's, so that is, that's the, th that is a, the thing that's it's fascinating the, That's the new me. version of, of, for, of years ago, you'd say, what do you want to do? I want to be famous. And the question is, for what? But you were famous when fame was, f fame was a diamond. Like fame was, now fame has turned into a cubic zirconia that everyone has access to. And it's crazy. That's crazy. What do you know? Do you know anyone? When you watch your son become famous, do you see? Do you see how different it was than when it oh happened my to God. you? Well, first of all, I. This is going to sound insane, but I, I, I wasn't against becoming famous. I, that wasn't why I. I wanted to be an. Literally, I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. I, I saw. I went to a, a, a children's theater production local in Dayton, Ohio, and I saw the kids on stage and I wanted to do that. It wasn't like I saw them on the cover of People magazine or yeah. saw a music video or went to a, like it was the actual thing of it that I, I wanted to do. And it never, honestly, it sounds insane. It sounds like I was stupid and didn't think it through, frankly. <laughs> I, I, I never gave any thought to, to being famous. I really, truly didn't. Well, your generation, and for lack of better words, I'll say the brat see, pack. Here's why. Because it seemed so impossible. It's like, how does it even happen? Today, almost anybody can be famous for something. Yeah. So probably when I was coming up, it didn't occur to me because it was so rare. Yeah, but it's, it. I was, and this goes up, maybe this is going into the- I need the, the lighter again. Oh, well. here. Um, I'm talking, not smoking enough. I'm obsessed with uh, a little obsessed with Corey Feldman, and who, I who I knew, yeah. But I've, I, I I kind of I can't decide what's the, the his song. Um, uh, which one? No, no, the, the one he comes out to. It's kind of sick. Um, the jokes on the you. Comeback kid. Oh, the, the comeback kid. I'm yeah. kind of down with the comeback. See, the uh, notion that I know Corey Feldman's entry song at his concerts. The, the notion that I just named a different one of his songs. I, I mean. I think people are getting a very. This is why I do your show because people get a different view of me. I think it's. I, well, I, I get a different view of you. I think you're fucking fascinating. <laughs> I think you're fucking fascinating. I I, there, I can't wait to talk to you about baseball. I didn't yeah. even know you liked baseball the way I like baseball. I love baseball. But wait, so, much. so here's what's crazy. Okay, let's 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 pivot. By for the way, a he second. tried to hang with me. He and Corey Feldman. 
Can't Corey Haim? Real, Corey, Corey Haim. Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were besties. And they tried to hang with the Brat Pack. They really, really, really wanted to hang with the Brat Pack. And we were like, oh, bless your little cotton socks. Yeah. Well, we never, never really happened. They got, you guys got the better scripts and directors, I think. Your generation, you guys were all actual actors. You were, you, I, I don't think any of you ever, never looked like from the outside were you guys getting into the movies to be famous. You guys all seemed like you had meaty, great. We wanted to be actors. Yeah, like it, all of you. I mean, I, I you know, I'm still, I'm, I, I get, I get caught up in it. The fact that you know, like, like Judd Nelson, like I've, I, I, that guy was just so, oh, he's so fucking dude. The real. Breakfast Club, the Breakfast Club. I, so this Brat Pack documentary came out. I'm, I do an interview in and, it. And, and, and uh, Andrew McCarthy, Andrew McCarthy did, did it. it. And, and the, what I was struck by was a lot of those Brat Pack movies I never saw. Like I never saw, um, you know, some kind of wonderful or oh, wow. or whatever. There's a lot of them I didn't see. Yeah. And the in the documentary, there are a lot of clips. And I was so struck by how good everybody is. Everybody. Molly Everybody Ringwald. I, I, still have a, I still have a crush on Molly Ringwald. Well, she I was always great. I, knew, I mean, I obviously I knew Molly, but like from top to bottom, everybody, the acting in those teen movies is so good. Now, is, are we saying that the same way everyone says rock and roll when I grew up was better than the new generation? Because I also grew up on, I'm, I'm younger than you, but I also grew up on Corey Feldman, Corey Haim, uh, River Phoenix, who are all younger than you. They were great. But their first round of movies were all Corey great. Corey Haim's amazing. And Lucas? Corey Haim. Corey it's Haim. It's one of the great performances ever. Yeah. Lucas is a great movie. But you started to watch their movies or the quality of their movies kind of uh, turn into... Uh, and I think this is when the Arnold Schwarzenegger started owning the box office. Everything's turned into stardom. And like, yeah. just let them do what he wants to do. He wants to do a Michael Jackson solo in the middle of the basketball fucking court. Let him do it. Yeah. By the he, way, that movie well, still, really, still a fucking great goddamn movie. He really became, movie. the day that Corey Feldman became obsessed with Michael Jackson was, I don't think a great uh, they day They should have never him. met. They should never have met. I met Michael a couple of times and he, he, was, he was very interested in my chin. Really? And then three years later, it looked like he had it. <laughs> 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 I have a picture somewhere of Michael and I, God, I wish we could find it. It's, it's, he's in like the, the silver astronaut outfit, pajama astronaut look from bad. Oh yeah. And, and it's, it, he's got the chin. Oh wow. And it's like, I see. It's a Spider-Man meme. Oh. And I'm looking at him going, I see you. Let's face it. After a night with drinks, we don't bounce back the next day like we used to. I sometimes have to make a choice. Either I'm going to have a great night or a great next morning, next day. That is until I found Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol. Pre-Alcohol is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that is to blame for your rough next day. Pre-Alcohol produces an enzyme to break down this byproduct and break it down. Just remember to make Zbiotic your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you will feel your best tomorrow. I'm telling you, every time I have these pre-alcohol before I drink, I notice a huge difference the next day, especially in the gym. Even after a night out, I can confidently plan on working out hard as crap the next day and not worrying about it. Vacations, weddings, birthdays, and reunions. There's so much going on. Get the most out of your summer plans by stocking up on pre-alcohol now. Go to zbiotics.com slash BurtCast to get 15% off your first order when you use code BurtCast at checkout. Pre-alcohol is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't feel satisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash BurtCast and use code BurtCast at checkout for 15% off. That's zbiotics.com. Slash Burtcast and use code Burtcast at checkout for fifteen percent off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and my great workouts. Isn't it so frustrating to do laundry and your clothes come out smelling like chemicals? This podcast is sponsored by Laundry Sauce. Laundry Sauce created the world's best smelling laundry detergent 
in simple to use high performance pods. Laundry Sauce has transformed the mundane task of doing laundry into a luxurious and exciting experience so you don't have to dread laundry day anymore. What's the secret sauce behind Laundry Sauce? They've partnered with one of the top fragrance houses in the world, the same team behind many of your favorite designer scents from Australian sandalwood to Egyptian rose to my favorite Siberian pine. Laundry Day will never smell the same again with seven bold soulful aromas to choose from. How do you choose your signature scent? Check out Laundry Sauce's sample pod box so you can try their top four best smelling scents before committing to a full-size box. Just head to laundrysauce.com slash BurtCast to try it today. And it's not just pods. Laundry Sauce makes scent boosters, dryer sheets, dryer balls, fabric softeners, and even candles too. I'm telling you right now, the ca- the candles smell just like that. We got Siberian pine and Leanne's been doing our, our clothes with Siberian pine. I feel like I don't even need to shower. I feel like my clothes smell so good that they've got me covered. Literally. Elevate your laundry day with Laundry Sauce. Head to laundrysauce.com slash BurtCast and use promo code BurtCast at checkout for 15% off. That's the best offer you're going to find. You must use my code BurtCast for 15% off your order. One last time. That's laundrysauce.com slash BurtCast. Promo code BurtCast for 15% off. I rolled the dice on meeting Michael Jackson. Like I would have, I bet he would be fucking. He, he was, he was everything you wanted. I heard he to talked be. like a black guy. Well, I've heard that too. But when I met him, he was, he talked like Michael. I've heard three wild conspiracies. One of them is Stevie Wonder isn't blind, mm-hmm. and the other is that Babe Ruth was black. I've heard those too. I I have a friend who asked Stevie. This is a a, a young kid who had, had too much to drink at a party, and I was sitting next to him, family friend, and Stevie Wonder was sitting next to him. And he literally turned to Stevie Wonder and said, so fam, how blind are you? My, by the way, what made my favorite quote ever. So fam, how blind are you? Can I meet this child? And Can I meet and, this person? And he's from a very famous family. Oh, oh my God. Very famous. Oh my God. And, um, and Stevie Wonder turned to him and said, pretty blind, son. <laughs> so fam. So how fam. Blind. How blind Chet Hanks you? always delivers. Is it Chet Hanks? <laughs> I cannot say. That sounds like a Jet Hanks quote. Say. It does. It does it sound does like a Jet Hanks quote. Jet Hanks broke down uh, the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef to his dad in a text that that got released. And it's the funniest fucking it's, thing it's I've so ever good. fucking read. It's really funny. Yeah. So fam, how blind are you? Pretty fucking blind, son. Yes, yeah, so Babe Ruth Black. That's what they say. Interesting. Like, and I, I got I have, that. I've heard that. That feels like a recent thing that people are talking about. Uh, the black community is saying it. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, there my it God. Is. You guys do have the same fucking the same chin. chin. I'm just saying. Huh? He's a big guy. He was big. Yeah, he was tall. I, I was struck with how tall Michael was. Uh, T.I., the rapper T.I. is big. Waka Flocka Flame is a large motherfucking dude. Did he, Michael, and there, Michael was the greatest... Sh- person i've ever seen on stage ever i've never seen anything like it he had he he had a, he had a glow around him like like he was an alien like you i don't know what it was unbelievable it was unbelievable do you think it was do you think it was do you curiosity we're watching movies and television all go into this weird place right now and i think that it's it's because people aren't going to the movie theaters for whatever reason streaming's kind of taken over i also think there's a lot of autonomy as artists do you think that the reason we got to get guys like michael jackson and great movies all the movies that you were in was that it was a little bit where uh the industry was still had their fingers and everything do you think that maybe the industry wasn't as crazy as we all thought for a period is that is that a weird thought well i i think I think in music, there were times where there were, I don't know, a hundred DJs. How many markets are there? Whatever. Think of how many markets there were. Every market had a star DJ. Yeah. And that DJ could play what they wanted to play. So you had a hundred different people with a hundred different tastes that could make and break stars. Yeah. And now everything is corporate. So the gatekeep there are four gatekeepers. Oh yeah, and, it's, kind right? of, it's kind of turned into less plinko and more just stra- streamlining. One hundred percent. So a weird, like I'm I'm obsessed with this band called Dawes. And uh, I know Dawes. I love Dawes. I love Dawes. When the tequila runs out, yeah, they're the best. We'll be drinking. Is that Dawes? 
when the tequila runs out, we'll be drinking champagne. It sounds like them. Here, will you type in Dawes, tequila runs out? That was I fucking used to come on stage to that song. Really? Yeah. I, I have, I have Dawes that. on my walk on. Really? My dad, I, I discovered Dawes. Please say it's Dawes. I really hope. D A D A W W E S. It is? Yeah. So I was. My point is they would have been, they would have been Jackson Brown or Jack Johnson. And they may still look, they do great. I'm not saying yeah. they don't, but like that's a band that would have been on every AM. That's the other thing. There's no AM radio. There's no radio AM radio anymore. Yeah. I, it's funny. I put, it's, it's an old school radio trick, but like whenever I have musicians come in, I always have them play the guitar and they always play and it always gets huge numbers. And I'm like, yeah, that's what they used to do on radio. They'd be like, you come in, Dave Grohl. Can you play some of your songs acoustic? And that's almost- I had my, them, I had Dawes on my podcast. I just listened to, uh, I'm a big podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but I listened to this great history podcast and they did a history breakdown of the Beatles. Mm. And it was fucking fascinating. There, so there, uh, Paul is, man. That's man. crazy. You know Paul McCartney? I, I, do, I do because he's a big, he's a big Wayne's World fan. What he is, 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 he says, "Ooh, you know that's a classic." I was, like, classic. I was like, "I was like, uh, no, Sergeant Pepper's is a classic. Wayne's World is a movie, but two guys in a wig. Different in genres. Wigs. Hold on, different genres. But what? I mean, if you're gonna say, what a fucking crazy script that was. There were so many laughs per minute. There were oh. so many winks to the camera, so many nods to the viewers, and it, it it it. Here's here's a great music Wayne's World story. So. Mike and I were and are very close, Mike Myers, and same with Lauren Michaels. And Lauren, no one has a better um, ability to stay relevant than Lauren. He's made that show. That show is still yeah. going on. Still, it has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But the notion that it started in 1975 and is still a part of the culture is a miracle. And it's all because of Lauren. Insane. So he has his pulse on what's happening, what's going to happen, what's relevant better than anybody I know. So in Wayne's world, there's a scene where they're driving, all the guys are driving in a car and they're supposed to be bopping along to a song on the radio. Yeah. And Mike's like, it's Bohemian Rhapsody, Queen. And Lauren was like, mm, that song's 25 years old. We're not doing that. It's 25 years old. What? No. Yeah. Uh, how about this song by, you know, Eagle, uh, Nina Cherry. Or whatever the fuck it would have been. Buck Cherry? You know what I mean? Who would, <laughs> yeah. who would have been in 1990? Buck Cherry. Buck too? Cherry. Was... Who, would, who would be the hot person? Yeah. Sinead O'Connor? Whoever it would have yeah. been. It was 1992 that that was made? Yeah. Yeah. So I was yeah. fucking first year in college. 90, year in college. 92. Yeah. And Mike's like, it's Bohemian Rhapsody. And this is an on and on. And what about Aerosmith? Aerosmith knew they were hot again. Oh, yeah. Aerosmith knew uh, Love in an Elevator whatever bohemian rhapsody mike wins and i go to the to his test screening and to this day i've never seen an audience ever react to any single joke in any movie like they did in, when bohemian rhapsody comes on and they start banging their heads like that i've never seen anything like it wow it's just an amazing cultural you know mike knew yeah i, I think also it's like God, Mike Myers is really fucking fascinating. Mm -hmm. Like you forget just how prolific the 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 trailer for Austin Powers is the only trailer I've ever in my life. Maybe the first one. Let me just say the first one. So I was in college. I was getting, I think I was graduating college that I turned to the person I was sitting next to and I was like, I'm seeing this fucking movie. Really? I said that out loud when he goes, uh, Austin, this is you in a nutshell. Oh, no, this is me in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. And I couldn't stop <laughs> fucking laughing. And then when they showed him trying to three-point turn, oh, in that, the, I was crying. The three-point turn thing is about as good a physical comedy gag as in the history of anything. Yeah. It's oh, so it's, funny. So everything about that, everything about the way he saw silly. Yes. Like he didn't, it was, it was so perfect. Because it didn't ask you to like, it didn't make you question your your beliefs or your politics or anything. It was just made you giggle. So, I mean, just little things like the the henchman and in, in Doctor Evil's lair with those giant wrenches that they're walking across in the background, and like, I'll never forget. You know, people talk about ad libs yeah. and improvisations, and 
I'll never ever forget being on the set with Mike. He's playing Fat Bastard. I'm playing Dr. Young Number Two, and Mike ad libs, That looks like a baby <laughs> to Vern. <laughs> and then and then he's like, I want to eat you. All that stuff was ad libbed right then and there, right in front of me. And I I thought, I knew. I was like, I'm witnessing something for the ages does he did he, when he would put on those outfits was he turning into that person and was he in that person even at craft services he would go back and forth depending on what was funniest really so which is what's so great about him so sometimes it was funny for him to be mike dressed as fat bastard yeah. be hilarious and other times it's just funnier to be with fat bastard and so it was a function of like like when he goes um when he's doctor, he goes, try the hot pockets. They're breathtaking. Like <laughs> that was a bit that he and I used to do about Lauren, that Lauren would always use the word breathtaking. And um, no, it was breathtaking. Um, and then it's in the movie. And I remember we, the first time the movie screened, I laughed out loud. No one else in the movie laughed. And Mike just stood up and looked at me. Like That's, that's great. So he, that, that's the thing about putting inside stuff that just makes you and your buddies laugh yeah. in movies. In St. Almost Fire. Um, there's this, this sequence where we all go, oh, boogala, boogala, boogala. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was a bit that we did describing certain types of guys that would hang out in the clubs in the corner really? that didn't speak English and try to hit on our girlfriends. <laughs> and they'd be in the corner going, oh, boogala, boogala, boogala. <laughs> and then, you know, try to buy champagne for our girlfriends. That was just a bit we were doing and the director thought it was funny and it's in the movie. Nobody, in a, and it's like, it's in the Brat Pack documentary. Wow. It's just a stupid thing that means something to us and catches on. All right. Here's my question. Pivot to that. How do you, how, why are you so good at making friends? Like, I think, I always think when I do a podcast, I go, how can anyone apply? Fun stories are perfect. I always want to like give someone some tools to take into life. I'm really bad at making friends. I'm not good at it. I am, why are you bad at making friends? Uh, I have intimacy issues. Me too. And so like, I, so like I have a tight group of friends. Yeah. And then I have a I have a wide group of friends. I think I'm probably you know close with a lot of comics. So it's all comics, and it's only because we have a shorthand, right. and I don't mind texting them. But when it comes to like your list of friends, are like all wildly crazy, successful, insane, top of their field people, and they seem to have a close connection with you. Like, what are the three things you do right to make a friend? Well, first of all, I, I appreciate them. Do you know it's like. I'm not competitive. I'm 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 super like down to be a fanboy. Uh, Do you know I'm, what I mean? I'm and give really it up and guy. give it up to them. Do you know I what I mean? Texted Rogan, great interview with dot 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 today. And then I was like, why would I send that to him? Guys, good. Then he, but then he wrote back. He was like, thanks. It was really fun. He's such a great guy. You got to fucking hang out with him. And I was like, oh, okay, good job, Bert. Yeah. Well, well he, that's a perfect example. Is Joe and I had never met. I did his podcast for the first time, first only time I've done it. I want to do it again though. Um, and we hit it off so much. And then we went shooting together and smoking cigars. And then he moved to Austin. Yeah. But like, that's the thing where like, if you, if you have a connection with somebody, um, then you, you just, you try to ride it as long, as long as you can. Cause men need mentors. We need like women know the, the, the value of the, the, the knitting circle, yeah. you know? They they know the value of friendship and men. You know we're loners, and it's not in I don't it's not in our DNA like, to be social. We're not men. I don't believe in our DNA are social animals. Like, we have to work at it. I feel like I feel like that. I get texts uh, on like Father's Day from comics that I don't really talk to. The hey, Happy Father's Day, bud. And then I go, I would never send that fucking text. Mm, like, you got to you got to send Father's Day text to my friends. Yes. Really? Yes. It's very important. Oh, uh, it's not ever gonna happen. You gotta do Merry you Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas, Hanukkah, you know. I will. I have one friend I'll do that to, to for the rest you of the life. You have one now. Jewish friend. No, you. I'm going to send you every holiday. You oh. will get a text from me. Okay. 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 Happy Arbor Day. <laughs> happy Arbor. I got Happy Canada Day from Mike. Just two days. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> How often do you talk to your friends? Like, I, I so I, I, let me put it in perspective. When I say friends, I like, when I, like, I probably have like maybe 10 dudes i could i'm very comfortable calling rogan tommy ari joey uh big j dan shane 
I, I maybe more, maybe more now that I say that. I'm, I'm thinking of my list of friends. But like, uh, like, do you, would you just call Mike Myers out of the blue and be like, "Hey, man, what's up?" What are you? One hundred percent. Really? And and you just, I tell like, uh, and and and, I, and on the receiving end, I got one yesterday. I was like, "Who the fuck is?" It was, it was a FaceTime from an unknown number. I answer and it immediately. I answer it immediately, and it's Downey. Like, what's going on, bud? How are you doing, bud? I'm like, good. What's going on? Sitting in the Hamptons, getting ready to, and just you know. So, but you know, we went to, we were in eighth grade history class together. Okay. So we know, you know, we're, we were high school buddies. Yeah. So, you know, um, and I have, uh, I have other high school buddies who are not in the business that I still, it's really good to have old, 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 old friends who knew you when. I got more of those. Yeah. I got more of those. I got a great compliment from a buddy, my buddy, Ty Rodriguez. Shout out to his restaurant, Rooster in the Till in Florida. He's mm-hmm. got a bunch of restaurants in Tampa, but he's, I moved to New York when I moved to New York, he moved, we moved in together. And he said to me, um, we were hanging out, we were shooting my special and he came backstage. You know, everyone's weird when you're shooting a special. Like, hey, I just want to say hi. And I was like, oh, come on. And then we went to a bar afterwards and he, the next day he was like, I'm amazed that me and you caught up. It's like, we haven't stopped talking. And I was like- That's a thing. Isn't that great though? Because yeah. there are people who I won't see for 10 years longer. And if you have the right history with them, Within five minutes, it's like no time has passed. Yeah. It's a cool feeling. I remember the day it happened when I started losing the allure of, because I, I think also being a regular kid, maybe maybe this didn't happen as much for you, or maybe you did, it did. Um, if when I saw a famous person, and I couldn't understand why they'd want to hang out with me. And so there would always, I'd always be nervous around them, and I never could have an honest conversation with them. Did that I, happen to you? I st- I still have it from time to time. For real? Yeah, like Mick Jagger. Okay. You know, like I... I thought you were going to say someone more attainable. <laughs> well, but it's like... I was like, so I got invited to a party for Mick. A dinner. A dinner for Mick. <laughs> this is last week. They played here. And I'm like, uh, and I don't go to anything. I'm, I, I work all the time. I love to be home with my wife and my dogs in Santa Barbara and I, 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 I want to get out of LA at any, so this was like coming into LA and, and even, even for like, I'm like, I'm like, it's, dude, it's Mick Jagger. He's yeah. not getting any younger. You're going. Yeah. But then when I meet him, I'm like, so, uh, I'm like Chris Farley in the Chris Farley show. I'm like, I'm, um, I think I'm coming to the show. <laughs> so lame. So stupid and lame. What's the set list look like? Yeah. And then other times, I'll be like, I'll talk to him and go, yeah, you're doing great. Like Ron Wood. Yeah. I was like, tell me what it's like to play without Charlie Watts. Is it been, how is it different? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, Rob Lowe. It was a good question. <laughs> fuck yeah, Rob Lowe. <laughs> fuck yeah, Rob Lowe. You're in the cargo and I didn't fuck that up at all. I didn't fuck that up at all. That's a really, that's a hard hitting in depth <laughs> question. I fuck it up so bad. I, I met, I met a celebrity's wife. Uh, I don't care. I'll never meet him. Eddie Vedder's wife. Mm. And uh, <laughs> I was with Chelsea Handler. This is a recipe for disaster already. So it was so bad. You could not so bad. set a bigger recipe for disaster than you've already set here. Uh, Bert, this is whatever her name is. She had told me it was Eddie Vedder's wife beforehand. And I was like, cool. And I was like, all right. Hey. I was like, nice. And then she was like, uh, I said, where are you from? He said her like San Diego, and I was like, "Wow, that's crazy!" Chelsea's like, "Oh, this isn't going well." Wow, that's crazy that you're be from, from San Diego. I never met someone from San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and Chelsea's like, "Oh God, I wish I had introduced him." And then I said, "I said," and I just knew this. It was like information I had already had about them. And I was like, "You're good friends with Gabby Reese and Laird Hamilton." Oh no! And, oh no! And, and she goes, "The lady goes, Laird. How, did you, how do you pronounce his name?" And I was like, "And I had stuck with it." And I was like, "Laird, right?" And then, and then Chelsea's just like, "We should probably get to our seats." And I was like, "Oh, oh fuck! Oh my god! It was so bad." That's and then, where you go. And then Laird and, Hamilton and, and Gabby Reese. The only connective tissue I had. That's unbelievable. Is the only like. And then as she left, Chelsea looks at me and go, what the fuck did you do? And I was like, I'm not good with meeting celebrities. She goes, she's just his wife. She's a regular person. What would you Bert. have done if it was Eddie Vedder? 
Hey, I'm I'm uh, still I'm sorry about Kurt. That was really painful for me nope, too. Nope, nope. Nope. I already knew what I was going to say to him. Oh, and you I'm did? I'm so glad I didn't meet him. You know, I used to do a great impression of you when I was in college. And he was not going to ask for it. And I was going to show it to him and just go, even flow. <laughs> <laughs> that was my go-to. That was it. I have, I have things that I'll say. I'll go, oh, Bert, please don't bring this up. Like I'll say to myself in the shower, if you meet this person, these are things not to say. And I'll highlight those things. And then sometimes those things show up. Let me ask you this. When you meet somebody in music, oh, I'm bad. do you hear their music in your head and then worry that you're going to hum it in front of them? I have that. Like, I'm worried that I'm going to see Meg and go, please allow me <laughs> to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Rob Lowe. And I'm here at this dinner. Like, that's what I'm worried about doing. I did that to Will Smith. No. He's like, he was like so tell me, how did you... How did you get into comedy? I said, well, this is a story all about how. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> and he was like, oh, God. I am horrific at it. And you know what's so fucking nice about it is that I think it, I don't look, this is a weird transition, but I think it allows me to be a good person people get to meet. Because no one ever meets a celebrity well. And so when I have fans that want to meet me, yes. all the things that they do that are awkward and uncomfortable, I find endearing because I do them also. Like when a dude his hands trembling when he's behind you and he puts it on your back. I had a dude, I had a really big dude, a hockey player, and he was nervous as fuck, and he's a hockey player. He's larger than I am, and I put my hand to go over his shoulder, and his hand had to force down, and he grabbed my ass on accident. He put his hand on my ass, and then you felt him move up, and then he was like, oh, God, and he pulled his hand from my back, and I could not stop giggling to myself, going, buddy, I started this. I fucked this up. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, people fuck up. I love when people fuck up a great, like when they see you and they're like. How about when they go, like, like the, to me, they'll be like, dude, I loved you in Full House. <laughs> and you're like, thank you. And you just move on. I Who watch, do you get mistaken for? Uh, uh, no one. I, get, no, I don't my, believe my that name, for a No, no one. You either there know me or you don't know be. me. The best one is I watched Tom Segura in an elevator with me get recognized as me. Oh, that's great. And I that's have really never good. enjoyed that's it. super good. That's and it was with, good. it was all his friends in, in Austin. And the walk, guy walked in, he's like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up, dude. I fucking love you. And Tom looked at me, because Tom, when we were together, he never gets recognized. I always get recognized. For whatever reason, I'm just, I don't know, I think I'm louder and whatever. People always recognize me. And Tom never gets recognized. And he's in the elevator. He's like, yeah. And he's like, guy goes, fucking Kool-Aid. And Tom's like, yeah. And he's like, dude, the mafia story is the best story ever. And I just started going, oh. And Tom just looked at me and goes, he has hot dogs in his pockets. <laughs> I had hot dogs in my pockets. By the way, um, we haven't talked since the big classic Netflix comedians po uh, oh, poster. Oh, you passed me that, uh, the, the, what, the roast? Well, the, well the, um, the, not only the roast, but the picture we took at Ted Sarandos' house in the pool. Fuck. Did, have you seen the photo yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I was honored to be in this photo with every great comedian, and you are in the place of honor, as you should be, shirtless in the pool. I mean, where else do well, you, you want to be? You know how that broke down, right? No. So, first off, I love Ted. The Ted's best. the best. He really I, is. I, I posit the following. Ted Sarandos is personally responsible for maintaining the integrity and safety of 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 comedy in With, show business. Without a doubt. Period. The comedy boom we're experiencing is single-handedly because Ted Sarandos fell in love with comedy at a young age. That's right. And met the coolest comics ever. That's right. And he wanted to, if he wanted to, if he could carry that torch along, and he allowed all of us a hundred percent freedom of speech and gave us. Uh, you know, I, I mean, text people. I'll tell you that. I'll to tell be you, funny. I uh, know I've never gotten a text from Ted. He's, although I, I should text him. I'm supposed to go to. Uh, yeah, um, he's the best. He loves a loves a stogie. He's the yeah, best. He is the best. He is. I remember the first back in the day. You do a comedy special, and you do you wouldn't even get the door. You, the production company would get the door. They put it towards the budget, and you would get ten thousand dollars to do a comedy special, and you were lucky to get ten thousand dollars. Really, doing my first Netflix special and going, hold on, why are they giving me money? They gave me so much more money than I deserved. And I wasn't even a big special at the time. And wow. I was like, what the fuck? So I love Ted. 
I love Ted in the same way that I have an affinity for the I, him the same way I do you because Ted really is like a family guy. Like he really like I went to a basketball game or a, a yeah basketball game and they invited me to sit in the box. I bring my wife and it's just like me and and uh, two dudes and I just start talking to two dudes and one guy's a fan and he was just talking and I was like. End up having a drink and bullshit and talking about comedy and what we like and what how much you know talk asking me questions about the podcast and we're just having a great time, and then uh, Ted shows up like you know halftime, and I'm like cool and then Ted's like hey you met my son and I was like oh you bring your son with you like and then I was like thank God I'm a cool person and I didn't do it. like hey buddy I'm watching a game can yeah. you <laughs> fucking thank God I'm yeah. a regular I'm a needy fucking asshole yeah. like you like me I like you <laughs> <laughs> we both like me we can talk about me if you want. By the way, that's yeah. not a bad way to leave your life. I'm but sorry. His son, but so when we started doing, when, when I got a call about the party, I didn't know the party was going to be what it was. I, I, Dude, I didn't know either. I, so this, this party is, Ted has it for the, the um, Netflix is a joke festival. It's like a thank you for everybody. And it was, dude, it was, I couldn't believe the quality level of every great comedian. That was I there. hope. There is a way to 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 translate to the audience how authentic what you said is. I remember you saying to me, and you are Rob Lowe, you said, can you believe who's here? You pulled me aside like we were two kids, two high school kids at a fraternity party going, look at the pussy at this fucking place. <laughs> it's true, it's true, and, it, true. And, and we were all looking at the same fucking pussy. We were like yeah. Dave, Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, Cat Williams, Cat Williams. fucking Kevin Hart. Every, everyone was there. And I remember you saying, can you introduce me to Dave Chappelle? And That's I went, right. I went, absolutely. You're not the first. Can I tell you so many people, Dave Chappelle is such a great white shark. Yes. Because when he cruises, you, you know, you've heard of him. You know, you've seen but you him. But you never see him in person because he's in Yellow Springs. Yeah. By the way, when I, and the, the reason I wanted to meet Dave is A, he's my favorite ever. But also I grew up in Yellow Springs and oh, he could know. not believe it. Well, he, when he saw you. He was like, fuck, like, that's the cool thing about Dave yeah. is he's not like, he doesn't, he may act like a celebrity at times, I guess, only, only out of, out of necessity, mm -hmm. you know, but when he saw you, he lit the, you and your son, he lit up and he was with you guys for the majority of that fucking party. Yeah. And sick. And, and everybody wanted to be with Dave. To be everyone. It was unbelievable to watch everybody. It's always amazing whether it's, there's always a bigger fish. No matter who you are, there always is. And to, to, to survive, and by the way, in any, in any business mm -hmm. and in any social situation, whether it's the you know, work or whatever, whatever you're into, there's always somebody bigger, better, no matter what. And to watch people navigate that is always amazing. And to learn how to navigate it yeah. is, a, is, a real, is a real thing. Oh, it... it this is what made me nervous is so I, they call me the day before the party and then all the people at there's Netflix, the picture. there's the picture. God, I look fucking good. How about that? My son got somehow made his way in there. I love it. I love it. And by the way, that wasn't, it wasn't that he made his way in there. Cause there were people not letting people in there. There were people that were not allowed into that picture. That is an invite picture. That is an invite picture. That is a wild picture. If they were trying to cancel comedy, they should have come to that party. That was it's That's, amazing. I mean, well, so here's the crazy thing. Keep that picture up. So they say to me. By the way, I know comedians are super pissed they're not in it. Yeah. there's. A, I mean, there's there's guys that, you know, like fucking Mark Norman and Shane Gillis were just hung over and didn't show up. And they were like, oh, fuck. I have, a, I have my, my worst hungover not showing up memory. I'll never forgive myself for it. Was, I don't know if you're. So there's a very famous rock and roll documentary. This I think it's called Black and White, and it's Roy Orbison, Bruce Springsteen, Elvis Costello, Jackson Brown. Uh, I, I mean, and, and there's a, a a couple of others played the what used to be the Copacabana and the old Ambassador Hotel. I had front row seats, so it didn't go. And, too hungover back in the day, <sighs> and that's that's you got that's the thing. You I'm, know, I'm never. You'll never hear that I'm too hungover to do something. That will never. Can you power through it, buddy? I How do you drank, power through it? I drank yesterday. I was a pussy when it I, came to being hungover. We partied in Edmonton the night before, and then woke up, had like a 10 a.m. flight, 
Got to the airport, had a few cocktails, had a couple cocktails on the plane, connecting flight in San Francisco, cold beers in San Francisco, flew home. Leanne's got a photo shoot, which I got excited for. I started drinking at the photo shoot, drank all the way. Leanne opens a bottle of white wine at the end of the night. And I'm like, I guess we're back into it. We have sex twice. We had sex twice last night. And I was, and I woke up this morning and I had a brand new trainer. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What? Tell me there was some other, uh, other nope. substance involved. Nope. nope. What? Nope. I don't want to get into details. I'll tell you privately, but it was fucking, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was fucking, but I had a party, smoked a joint here, a joint at my house, and then hit my vape pen before bed. And I was like, and I knew I had a new trainer coming in tomorrow. You're my today. Hero. So I said, I woke up this morning and I was like, oof. I go, you got after it. You got to fucking pay the tax. Mm. You got to pay the man, Josh Bridges. And so I woke up. And did a crazy, the guy's like, how are we feeling today? And I was like, I've been partying all day yesterday. And he was like, okay. He was like, well, let me know if you need to tone it down. I said, absolutely not. And I fucking pushed through that workout. It was wild. But that is the thing about me is I always feel like I want to get loose. But if I allow myself to get loose, I have to pay the pay the tax. Pay the, the tax. Morning. That's and, a good one. And I never, I will always show up to something like this. I go, I don't, now here's the other thing is I won't drink at something like this. Although I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did because I think Chelsea showed up. And I was, she was like, are we drinking or what? And I was like, oh, fuck, looks like we're drinking. Um, I don't think I had a show that night. I don't think I did. Such a good show. But um, so here's the fascinating thing about this picture. I get a call from Netflix the day before. And they go, hey, we're going to do a big picture in front of Ted's pool. It's, it's all the comedians. We would love for you to jump into the pool in the middle of the picture and make it wild. And I was like, okay. I was like, listen, here's the deal. Uh. Yeah, and in my head, I'm like, sure, thinking. Uh, Did you think for a minute, like, what are the other comedians going to think of it? I didn't know who was going to be there. I didn't know. And then when I showed up, it was a different, and I went, hold on. And I mean this with respect because I am one of them, but there's a lot of ego with this party. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> and if I decide to steal the stage, which is my energy. And by the way, no one, and I say this with all respect, no one is more judgmental than comedians. With you run afoul with in the comedy world, you're fucked. I remember one time we were at a party in Malibu. It was me, Dane Cook, and Gary Goldman. And uh, we were getting out of the ocean in Malibu. And there was a party full of like, you know, young, back then it was like probably 22 years ago, agents and everything. And I got out. I came running out with my dick, my pants off and my dick tucked between my legs. And Dane goes, why don't you tell me we were doing the bit? He's like, come on, man, we could all have done it. And I was like, but that's a comedian's brain. That's right. Is like you got the you got the juice. You got the big laugh. Why, the big laugh. why share it with us? That's right. So I said, when I got there and I saw fucking Cat Williams, I go, I don't think he's gonna appreciate me jumping in. And I go, also, there was a part of me that's like, I am also a good comedian. I don't need to be the prop. Like, I don't need to be the guy jumping. I am a wild guy. You're not guy. the trained seal. Yeah, uh, but but part of me goes, that is my personality. And like my personality is jumping. Yeah, in the no, pool. no, it's not off brand. It's not off brand at all. And so I understood what they were saying, mm -hmm. and I said, "Is Ted cool with this?" And they're like, "Ted doesn't know." And I was like, "Okay." I said, "Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to change into a speedo. If I do it, I'll be in all my clothes. I'll do it in my clothes." I said, "Look, can we just play it by ear when I get there?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." So the first thing they do is they roll Sinbad up front. I mean, and Sinbad, I think that, I think we all knows had a stroke, and he's not very mobile. And and I I saw them put him up front. And I go, I'm not going to jump in and get Sinbad soaking wet, give him pneumonia, and then I'm the person responsible for killing Sinbad. We can't have it. And I was like, can't have it. Fuck. So I get there and I'm looking and I'm watching all these people file in. John Stewart and I'm like, I can't jump in the fucking pool, Don, John Stewart. And then I said, and then but you can see they're like. They Netflix was like, yo, are you, are you going to do something? Like, you could do something? And no, I, I could. Like, I was hearing the whispers. I yeah. Do this. <laughs> and I said, uh, and I just went, I said to myself, I was, and I think I might have been a little buzzed. I said, what would I naturally do? Like, what would I, and I just went, I don't have a good spot here and I want to get a good spot. And so I just took my shirt off. And the second I took my shirt off, Dave Chappelle goes, he's getting in the fucking pool. You're a goddamn rock star, Burr Kreischer. You're a fucking rock star. And as soon as, Chappelle gave me the green light. You're right. It was done. Everyone was like, cool. Kevin Hart said to me, fuck, man, I wish I got in the pool. And I was like, and I just walked and got in the pool, stood there. And then, and I didn't, didn't fucking ruin everyone's time. I did, I, I was authentically me. And then because of that, Ted get, got in next to me, put his feet in. And then it, it, it was like, just, I, I had so much anxiety about that. Cause I was like, I'm going to fucking, 
so great. But yeah, aren't you glad a, you did it? I'm so glad I did it. I mean, I, I feel like we never really regret the big swings. I think we regret not taking the big swings. You're right. You're always going to regret. I'll tell you what, I'll even say this. If you're a big swinger, like if you're not a big swinger and you take the big swing, sometimes it turns out weird. Right. But when yes, you are, yes. when you know, when you're known to swing big. Let's talk about this. Shoot. Big swing. Maybe you're not a big swinger. How do we feel about my man, Ben Affleck on the Brady roast? So I have to say I'm team Affleck my whole life. Same. I love that guy. He's I'm, great. I am his guy. If he ever doesn't feel good about himself, he should get my phone number and I'll, I'll, ga I'll gaslight him for 15 minutes until he believes in himself. <laughs> fuck her. Fuck her. You're the man. You're the man. Dude, do you realize how much pussy's out there? Me and you, I'll tell you what. You don't even need to fall off the wagon. Just watch me drink. And I love that guy. And I don't mind what he did. People underestimate how difficult a roast is, especially when you're not a comedian. I'm a comedian. Me and Tom are on it. And we did solid. Hit a double. Hit a double. In that, in that. You'll take it. In a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. In a fucking heartbeat. You just don't want to strike out. You do not want to bomb. And by the way, I think it might have been even better if Tom and I had actually taken a dick and just eaten it because we would have been funnier in that moment the, of getting out of the it. Of bombing. Of bombing. We would have been probably- it's like Carson. When Carson used to bomb, he was funnier than when he was funny. Yeah. But we did fine. And when and when they started booing Kim Kardashian, I went, ooh, this is a, this is a comedy crowd. This is like straight. They're in here for the comedy. Yes. They're sports and comedy. They want to hear sports and comedy. And they want to hear rough comedy. They don't want to hear like soft shit. No. And, and when Ben Affleck went up there and he did his thing, he was doing something. I, I watched what he was doing and he was jumping off prompter, which number one confuses the prompter guy. And, and he was ad-libbing like almost too much, which I think is just, it's, you know. That's for, interesting. I wondered if it was on prompter. It was all on prompter. It was. Someone like Gronk off prompter. Mostly I think. I think he was misreading prompter a couple times and it was even funnier. Oh, he was unbelievable. When he lit me up, it's not what the prompter said. When he goes, Bert, I'm the fucking drunk fat guy. I'm a <laughs> drunk idiot. That's not what the prompter said. <laughs> but he just he just read that line and then did his riff on it and it was even better than what was written. Gronk is the fucking best. But I look at I look at those guys that did that and and I go, anyone who went up and threw their hat in the ring, it's always I, I, I mean, the story afterwards is the thing you talk about. Yes, for sure. But I, you know, I, I don't know why America, I don't know why the internet goes after Ben. I don't know. Uh, well, look, let's face it. I love Ben. He's great. Yeah. He was not good on that night. No, no, he was not. He was and, not. And, you know, it's like when they roasted me, which is one of my favorite, remains one of my favorite things. It's, if you like comedy, it was- Who was on your roast? Next level. I saw it, but I forget who was on it. Spade was the- um, Fucking brilliant. Murderer. He is so and, fucking funny. He was, and he's known me forever. Yeah. Since Tommy Boy, since SNL. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy Carr. Um, Monster. He's on uh, tour with Jim. Nikki. Nikki's, Nikki's um, that's what Nikki does. And um, Pete Davidson. Yeah. Peyton Manning. Holy shit. Ralph Macchio, Jewel, murdered, oh. and- I'm not going to bad mouth Ann you. You've already Coulter, done it to yourself. And Ann Coulter. Who did not understand what was going on. No. And she, it turned into the roast of Ann Coulter, which is yeah. great for me because I, like, all the vitriol went to her. Um, but that's the thing is, like, if you don't understand what, what it is and don't handle it, you can get ruckus. And there's, a, there's another sidebar is you got to respect the writers and trust the writers because the writers know this material better than you. So when they help you write something, you got to know that what they've yes. written is going to work. And that's number one, what Tom and I did is we just read our prompter and we wrote, I would say we wrote 80% of it, but the writers, everything, I mean, I'm not going to say they're this. so funny. Everything you laughed at was what something one of the writers wrote. Everything, the big laughs were the writers laughs. Yeah. And so I don't think sometimes like a guy like, like Ben, maybe, knows or trusts the writers and he trusts himself a little more. That's what, that's what happened with Anne. They, they yeah. said, we've got stuff for you. She goes, no, I got my own stuff. So lesson number one, cause you know, so many people are going to be doing roasts that are listening to this. Um, <laughs> you know, if you no, get, but, if you end up at a roast, trust the writers. Well, no, but you, they'll be just doing a best man speech. 
Yeah, what do you do there? Don't go off book. To keep it tight. Keep it tight. Do you think AI writes good best man speeches? I bet it doesn't. Can you? I bet it's not good. Uh, yeah, I bet, I bet it's. I bet it's not. Could you say though, write an AI speech in the vein of, and then say you, but then 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 they're they're screwing you you over with your AI. Type in write a best man speech, and I'll do it for uh for Bert Kreischer in the voice of Nikki Glaser. I bet that's gonna be fucking painful. It's gonna be painful. Yeah, look there, we had Rob Riggle, Peyton Manning, Jeff Ross, Jeff Ross, Jimmy murdered. The single meanest joke ever, ever. He's like, Pete Davidson's here. Pete Davidson likes to talk about um, his father's death, but this is not the roast of Pete Davidson's father. That was on 9-11. That's how rough. Jimmy Carr's. That's how rough the crowd was. Brutal. He is brutal. Brutal. You have to have an AI download. Yeah. Uh, fuck it. Is there anything better than sitting down with a nice cigar to unwind from the day? I think not. This podcast is sponsored by Cayman Cigar Company. They make premium cigars using the highest quality Caribbean tobacco, and the cigars are hand-rolled by master cigar rollers. What makes Cayman so unique is they're the world's only premium cigar company to donate 100% of net profits to charity. Every dollar they don't use to roll cigars goes back to local and international charitable organizations from creating entrepreneurial opportunities for marginalized populations to supporting the self-sufficiency of those in addiction recovery to providing specialized assistance to U.S. veterans. Just for BurtCast listeners, they've created a custom sampler pack so you can enjoy all of their top cigars in one pack. Head to caymancigars.com slash BurtCast to check out the sampler. Plus, Cayman Cigars are finally available in the U.S. So the best-kept secret in cigars is now available for anyone in America to enjoy. I'm telling you, this sampler pack rocks. It rocks. I love a good cigar, and I enjoyed the entire sampler pack at the beach this weekend. So enjoy a cigar and give back to those in need. Head to CaymanCigars.com slash BurtCast to check out our sampler while supplies last and use code BurtCast for 10% off your order. Once again, that's Cayman Cigars with an S.com backslash BirdCast for 10% off and make sure to use my promo code BirdCast so that they know that I sent you. If you're buying protein powder or other supplements, you should be concerned about the ingredients. It's no secret that the supplement industry is not heavily regulated and many products on the market have fillers, even harmful chemicals in them. That is why I'm excited to talk about today's sponsor, True Nutrition. Unlike most supplement brands, that focus on marketing a product that is manufactured elsewhere. True Nutrition manufactures its own products while marketing takes a back seat. True Nutrition was formed to provide protein powders and supplements with absolutely no fillers, no additives, no gluten, no, and most importantly, no BS. It can be incredibly difficult to find the right match of protein powder to match to your body and your fitness goals. That's why with True Nutrition, you can create your own fully customizable protein powder mix with the exact ingredients you want based on your activity, your taste, your diets, your goals. What's more, you can even see your nutrition facts in real time as you create your mix. This is truly is sports nutrition designed by you. You can finally stop worrying about your supplements and are they doing you more harm than good? For a limited time, our listeners get 15% off your entire order when you use code BIRDCAST. That's 15% off your entire order at truenutrition.com with the promo code BIRDCAST. I made mine, my protein powder. Here's what I did. I added BCAs uh, for recovery. I did 50%, I think 50 or 60% protein. Here's the most important part, and this has been hard for me, is you know I'm keto or try to be carnivore. I went sugar-free, and I added a uh, psyllium husk for a little bit of extra movement down here. I loved it. It was so fun. It was like almost like creating your own gamer character before you played a video game for a limited time, except you're the character. You're the avatar you're making. For a limited time, our listeners get 15% off your entire order when you use code BIRDCAST at checkout. That's 15% off your order at truenutrition.com with promo code BIRDCAST. Take the guesswork out of nutrition with True Nutrition. Did you watch the Home Run Derby last night? I watched enough of it because I'm a big Dodger fan and yes. love that Tiasker. I, 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 
I text Dave Roberts regularly and I'm like, I think Teoscar is our Mr. October. And I said this early in the year. This is a guy, when the bright lights are on him, he is a different player. He is. Yeah. And he showed it again at the home run derby. God, that and, was so And we exciting. need that. Dodgers need that. We've got guys who are stars in the regular season, turn up the heat a little bit. Sometimes they don't show. Yeah. That's historically an issue for the Dodgers. And and I think this guy is going to be real special for us in, in the postseason. And he showed a little glimmer of it. I'm, I'm so fat. I was so involved in that. And we were watching it. Ileana and I were watching it together. And I was on that last pitch when it hit the top of the center field fence and bounced in, I was just like, man, this is why you watch sports. Yeah. This is the shit. Yeah. They so. delivered, like, it's better than any fucking movie script you could deliver. Yeah. Because it's it's in real time. One pitch left. One. And it, it was so fucking awesome. I was turned into a kid and I was like, I was like, yo, I'm back in baseball. Like, I'm me, back. Oh, me, me too. I'm back. I've been back for a few years. For a few years. When I moved to LA, I started going, when I moved to New York, I went to a couple of Yankees games and they were fun. They were a party and there was a blast, but I was never like, I was a little bit of a Yankees fan when, uh, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, when they had the run in 2001 for the world oh, series, yeah. cause I just moved out to LA Jeter and, and Jeter, David Wells. It, that was a great, that was a great team. And then I kind of fell off. And then I started going to Dodgers game, we went to opening day this year. Same. And I looked at our team and I was like, this is a great fucking team. This is and I and I did not understand how great Otani was. Who did? They, it was like everybody hyped him and hyped him and hyped him, and he's better than that. He's better. He's better at things that I. He showed me stuff. He showed me stuff in games that I heard coaches talk to me when I played, and I still didn't understand it. Just like email, I did not get it. Going opposite field, I never could go opposite field. Why would you go opposite field when all my power is pulling it to yeah. left field? Why would I ever go to opposite field? And then you watch him not move his feet. Just, it is just torque and wrists. And you are like, that is next fucking level. How about the sound the ball makes on his bat? Like no one else's. It sounds like a bad special effect. Do you think it's, do you think, it's, is there a thing that he's so good because he doesn't speak English? And so like, no, he doesn't really have the, much exterior coming to him. And I think he he yeah. And I think he lives a very simple life. Yeah. Um, he it was super interesting. I I got to meet him and I it was in the locker room and he, he was kind of the only person in there and his back was to me and he had his jersey top on and then like running shorts on, you know. And I asked him if we could take a picture and he's does. And I thought he would just stand up and we do the selfie. He has his top of his jersey on. And all we're gonna he got he said, and he got completely dressed, completely dressed. Shoes, socks, belt, cap, completely dressed. And we took the picture. And I thought, I don't know what that means, but it means something. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, any other player would have just taken the picture. And is it attention to detail? Is it a respect thing? God, I don't man. know what it was, but I was like, oh, I just had a moment. And then I um, got... He reached out through the the Dodger, my Dodger connection, and he said, "Is it okay if I post the picture?" So here's the biggest baseball star in the world. I've asked him for the photo, and he's wants to make sure that it's cool. Like it was like so like sweet. He's such so sweet. What a great guy. What a great guy. Yeah. It's it's okay. I was thinking I had a dream. Sometimes I'll dream in promos. Like I'll wake up, I'll dream a joke, I'll, and I'll write it down when I wake up. Yeah. I wrote a joke. I had a dream about a joke. And I told it, I tried to put it in my special and it just didn't work. No one got it. And but I told it in the pool the next day and everyone liked it. I said, uh, the joke was, oh, he's the kind of stupid that gets stuck in an elevator and all you really have to say to him to get out is turn around. <laughs> and I and I tried it in the special. It didn't. I tried it every show and the booth was laughing hysterically because it was not working. But I had a dream. I had a dream that Major League Baseball asked me to... I do a promo for Major League Baseball. And they're like, because I feel like Major League, when they got with the doping stuff, we were all, I, everyone was in then when it was all the asterisks, you know, home runs. Yeah. That. And then and then all of a sudden, they stopped and, it, and they, I think they went on strike or something and everyone 
kind of fell off from from our our American pastime For to sure the point do. where it's like I go to Tampa, kids don't play baseball anymore the way they play hockey or lacrosse or all these other sports, and they asked me to do a promo, and I and I the promo was, why do you why do you love baseball? And I was standing in front of a field, and I gave this great speech about these are our cathedrals, these. Are, are there's nothing better than the cheap seats in San Francisco on the and in left hand, left field so you can see all the bay and watch the game. The perspective is such like the Grand Canyon. Why are you not doing this promo? Well, promo? That's well, I, I started doing it. I wrote, I woke up, I wrote it down. Like all the things I love about baseball games. One of my favorite things is just to eat lunch at a baseball game. Yeah, just to get a cheap seat and go in and have a beer and a hot dog and have lunch at a fucking baseball game. And you'll end up staying longer than you ever thought you'd stay. Getting a jersey, getting a hat of a team, feeling a part of a community, feel, cheering for the same thing is so primal. And I was, and so I did this read, but I put it back to you. What, why, what do you love about baseball? I mean, that's it's you just you just said it. I mean, you 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 really did. Um, I uh, because I have a, a show on Fox, and Fox has a lot of baseball and has a World Series. I have often been been able to do the intro to the World Series games. And it's my favorite thing I get to do is get to do those voice of tonight in game six, everything is on the line. <laughs> to do the, and it's like, I'm so excited to do that. It's yeah. the most fun thing that I get to do. Yeah. I mean, it's like a dream come. It's totally a dream come true. What's your favorite memories as like my favorite memories as a child of baseball was when you'd get done playing on a Saturday and you'd come home and this week in baseball was on. Oh my God. How great was this week in baseball? And you had just played your game and you knew your highlights in your head. And then you saw major league highlights this week in baseball. How great was this week? In baseball? It was fucking so great. Why don't they, re but do they still have that? They don't need it anymore. Cause we see, I mean, oh, yeah. we would grow up. Where did you, what city did you grow up in? Tampa. We didn't have a team. So you know, a team like, you would grow up and maybe you saw your own team's highlight that night, maybe. And that was it. You didn't see anything. They would just give the scores. Yeah. So the notion that you could see other teams' highlights, you had to tune into this week in baseball. Oh, that's right. Now that you that's say that, why. it's so funny. We did, that, I'm, I didn't even realize this. That was clearly before ESPN. Yes. I was watching that. There was none of it. it was I the remember. only way to see Willie Stargell. I was a Reds like Ozzy or, Smith. Ozzy, all those guys. They, 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 no internet, no ESPN. That was the only way to see what was going on around the league. God, it was such a Mel Allen here <laughs> this week in baseball. It would be great when you'd see baseball players come onto TV shows and you'd be like, "Shut up!" Like, what was the what was the name of the pitcher who was on Flipper? Oh my God! On Flipper? On Flipper, uh, it was it was a, a black pitcher, uh, Gibson. Kirk, Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson was on Flipper. Bob, wait, Bob Gibson was on Flipper. Can you type on Bob Gibson? Flipper? Come on! I swear to God. Oh, that's God, he is look, a look, large look, fucking man. Look at how big Otani is. Look, and he put on he put on all his. He's so big, you can't believe how big he is. How about how fast he is? That's when I went and saw him. That was the thing that blew my mind. He's six four. Yeah. He could lead the league in stolen bases if yeah. they let it, if if he wanted to. He, I, I mean, I'm, I, I can't imagine that they still let him. He's pitch. worth the money. He, he, they bought him as a two way player. I don't care if he ever pitches, ever. He's worth no. the money. It is, though, it is, there is something that used to bother me about professional baseball that all the kids we grew up with that were great pitchers were also great hitters. They were the best athletes. They were the best Always. athletes. Yes. And then you'd watch these amazing athletes, Brad Radke. Brad Radke play, pitched for the Twins. I played with him all growing up. Oh, wow. And he got, and he, I will say, Brad Radke came out effortlessly, effortlessly, because he played basketball too. In the middle of his basketball practice, he'd come out to take BP in in basketball pants, uh, basketball shoes, and a, and a jersey. He would hit bomb after bomb, effortlessly, bomb after bomb. And then he goes to the Twins, never saw him bat, never saw him bat once. I never, I'm sure he did, but I, like, he was, it's amazing. He was the best batter I knew all growing up. It's and it's so it's when it, when I saw that with Otani, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Finally, they're letting that true athlete Do always thing. because that was the thing about Dave Babe Ruth, great pitcher, great hitter. And then they're like, "Well, stop him from pitching. Let's just have him hit." It's kind of wild. 
I wonder if he'll pitch again. I mean, I, I this is what we talked about with Rich Eisen. I really do wonder if he'll pitch again. Yeah. He clearly wants, he'll get to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. I think they will because it's just the fans will love it. But like, I never thought I'd see the day when we signed him that I would go, I don't care if he pitches. He's that good a hitter. Yeah. I love, I get stuck on there. These dudes on online who test out bats and they'll just, and they just hit bombs. They just hit bombs and they'll test out bats and they're, and you just go to a park and you'll just see them hit four. And it's all metal bats. See, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with cork bats. I wanted to cork a bat. By the way, it's fucking impossible. So the thing you I'm, have to have like a lathe and all that. I don't know oh, how yeah. they, I don't know how the hell that like my brother Chad and I were like, we want to have a cork. Remember I was like, he had a cork bat. Brett, George Brett. George, George Brett. And then there was one guy. I remember one bat shattered and, and 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 a bunch of rubber balls fell out of them. That version. Yeah. Where it was like literally rubber balls were in the bat. And then there's the corked bat. And then I'm I'm obsessed with it. You never hear anybody talking about So was the thing on a corked bat was that it was just lighter. I think it was lighter and it had a give to it that sp- made it more springy. Oh, really? It can't be just lighter because why wouldn't you just make a lighter bat? Because I think that's the thing about a bat is the corking of it just makes you, your bat speed speed's going to be quicker. And then then I guess your, your question is why wouldn't they just make quicker bats? That's right. I think it has something to do with the, with the spongy. Did you find Bob Gibson on Flipper? There's no way that exists. There's no way. Bob Gibson was on Flipper. He was like, hey, Flipper. Bob Gibson. You look like quite an animal. What, I mean, what the hell was it? What was his storyline? No, no, line? he was- uh, the, What was his storyline? He, he was pitching to his- the, You can't tell me the internet can't find Bob Gibson on Flipper. He was on Gentle Ben. Oh my God, Gentle Ben. I remember them as being almost the same show. Were they shot in the same location? No, no. <laughs> no one was in the Keys. <laughs> there aren't any bears in the <laughs> Keys. <laughs> It would be a cool crossover, though. They're like, oh, shit, there's a bear in Key West. Don't worry, it's Gentle Ben. He wants to talk to Flipper. Gentle Ben, right up until the minute he wasn't. <laughs> Wait, you can't find Bob Gibson, Flipper, and then tight TV show. By the way, and also, Bob Gibson was notoriously the meanest pitcher, one of them, who ever lived, Bob Gibson. Okay, type in baseball player Gibson, uh, Flipper, baseball player cameo on flipper meanest pitcher who ever lived cameo flipper bob gibson's got to be bob passed gibson. right what was the best cameo by an mlb player? jesus christ pete rose's least favorite p- pitcher to hit off was bob G- well it was bob gibson and nolan ryan you're a cincinnati guy yeah and so i grew up a cincinnati reds fan and so and then the, at that time, the Dodgers and Reds were bitter rivals. Bitter, 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 bitter. bitter. I, met, I met Pete Rose one time. Yeah, he's I amazing. I loved it. Amazing. I loved it. Amazing. Guy still got it. Like Let's get Pete Rose in the podcast, on my fuck podcast. Fuck yes. Do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? 100%. Okay, what about the Asterix guys? See, here's the, the my, I'm a little torn because Pete never bet on himself to win or the Reds to win. Yeah. I'm sorry, to lose. He voted them to win, yeah, not to lose. He was never throwing games. No. There's never any of that. And I know, but his, I just, those stats, would you look at his stats? And also what an, amba- like, what a great ambassador for the game he is, the love he has for the game. Absolute He's love. So beloved. I, I, I would vote Pete in. I don't I would, know. I would vote Pete in. I know. I'd- I don't know how I feel like about, look, Barry Bonds, yes. Barry Bonds, with, without, I'm sorry. Barry Bonds, everybody will tell you, is one of the, gr- the greatest hitter who ever lived until Shohei showed up. And right. they don't say, they don't mention the, the performance enhancing stuff. Barry was that good. Now, Sammy Sosa? I would put him in. He's so important to baseball. Him and Mark McGuire, McGuire? are so important to baseball. That that was the funnest I know, thing I know to it was. watch. I know it was. And I it was know. nice to be absolutely oblivious to the fact that they were on performing drugs just going like what is what is happening it was really great <laughs> what is going on i remember here? vividly where i was that year and what it was just watching i remember the home run uh mark mcguire hit to break the record that line drive home run to left field i remember i remember ricky henderson stealing a hundred bases was it a hundred in an all-star game he broke the record in an all-star game i was in philadelphia and he slid in and he, i remember i remember those things as a kid and as a and i 
And it's so interesting is that I allowed that to disappear in my life, to have, to be fascinated by the athleticism. I mean, it was just, it was so important. And then here's the problem is that like, when you, here's, here's the problem is like Ken Griffey Jr., the most beautiful swing that's ever, ever. touched a baseball bat. And then you, you know that he has to be like, well, hold on, hang on. I did, I did, I did it by the rules. Right. And that's why you're not seeing those numbers from me because I was following the rules. And so that's kind of the- I know, I know, I know. That's what I know. It's like comics feel like that when they go, so wait, you didn't write your special? You had a team of writers write your special? Right. And you're like, oh, that's not the, I mean, it is the rules. Well, I feel like that with one. books. I feel like that with memoirs, with 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 any with celebrity memoirs. Yeah. It's like, you didn't write it? You had a, I mean- well, you either the, wrote it or you didn't. The, uh, the the downside of that is I wrote mine and it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. I wish I had a ghostwriter and just put my name on What's it that? and the, the cheat code. Because yeah. when you write and you're not a big reader, it reads a lot like a menu. I'm not much for that reading thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wish I had someone read my book because I'm not a good out loud reader. And so throughout my audio book, it's just me cursing at the fucking shitty writing. <laughs> That's very funny. It's the funniest. That's amazing. It's That's the funniest. My bit. audio book, I sold my book by a landslide. That's amazing. Because people wanted to listen to me. Fuck I, would up. Just, I would just go like, what the fuck? And they left it all in. It's great. And at one point I go, my, my, I got to take my pants off. My fucking balls are sweating. And the guy's like, take your pants off. And I was like, okay, everyone's cool if I take my pants off. It's in the book. That's amazing. At the end of the book. At the very last, I wish I had this. It's so funny. I wish I had the very last. I'll find it and I'll put it into this episode. But the very end of the book, I'm trying to finish the book and I'm laughing so hard going, there's no way you sat through me reading this book. There's no, I go, what kind of person is listening still? It, it, yeah, still. And I, I'm just laughing going, this is the worst book in the world. And you sat through all of this. It's a true fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, I, I want to talk about the new series, the the second season yes. uh, on Netflix. Does uh, I, have you ever noticed your son show any of the uh, things that you've been in this business so long? Show any of the the bad habits you see celebrities get when they get a second season, or like like uh, but who shark who put this charcuterie board together? <laughs> no, he's. He my son, John Owen, I got his, I must, I must. He's a grounded child. He's, he is a regular fucking kid who just happens to be talented as fuck. Right? Yeah. He, he really is. It, it, I, as a dad, it's one of my favorite things and to see him come into his own as a writer, particularly as an actor in this second season. He, he's, he's just blossomed as, as an actor. And, you know, he's currently writing a big project for Chris Pratt's company. Um, wow. I mean, he's really, really just on fire. And you never know. Yeah. I mean, you never know if w w how they're going to, what they're going to do when, when they, look, we can open the door, but they got to walk in. Oh. And I'll tell you another thing. If you can't walk in the door, you're out. I mean, we're seeing it with Bronny James right now. It's like, if you can't cut it, you're going to, you're going to, you know, you you can figure out a way to finagle the Laker jersey, but if you can't play in the Laker jersey, you're done so. Yeah. So um I'm super happy with with Johnny's work in season two of Unstable and 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 also just that we were able because I do look at seasons like seasons, like sports teams. Season two, we wanted to build on what we accomplished on season one. And in comedy, as you know, it's it's about the character and you're funnier when people know you and they when they're invested in you and they have an, a notion of you it's always going to be a deeper level of comedy than when you're first out there so season two people know these characters the writers know the characters we we have more latitude to do more with the characters so it just is better yeah it's 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 what what i find fascinating about that more importantly is that you say you know it's it's your job to walk it's your job to if you get open the door you got to still got to do the job What's interesting to me is I just had this conversation with Georgia, my oldest downstairs. You were also a good enough parent where you didn't push them through the door. Yes. Like sure. you, you, you actually said. Oh, I didn't want him to come through the door yeah. at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm the idiot that paid the check for him to go to Stanford, turn around and be in fucking show business. He could have done that just by going to Jamba Juice. He didn't have to, you know, he could have been 
You could have worked at McDonald's. You didn't need to go to Stanford for that. But I'm like, so, really? So After all this, yeah. you're not going to be a, a nuclear physicist or something? Really? Most Americans think they spend about $62 per month on subscriptions. But get this. The real number is closer to 300 That is literally thousands of dollars a year, half of which we probably forgotten about. Thankfully, I started using Rocket Money. They found a bunch of subscriptions I'd forgotten about. And then they helped me cancel the ones I didn't want anymore, like exercise apps. Exercise. I have so many exercise subscriptions. You have no idea. Exercise subscriptions is must be like a pocket addiction for me. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all the app's features. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They're, they deal with customer service for you. That's awesome. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash birdcast. That's rocketmoney.com slash birdcast. Rocketmoney.com slash birdcast. Rocketmoney.com slash birdcast. Rocketmoney.com slash birdcast. Some parents, myself included, are a tad bit overbearing. <laughs> Where like George had just started learning how to play the guitar. And I was like, hey, we got to get you a guitar to take back to college. She was like, cool. I go, this is going to be great. I'm going to get you in a band. I go, and I have so many good co- connects with like songwriters. I'm I go, listen, cool. here's my plan for you. We're going to get you in a band. We're going to move you to Nashville. You're going to start with a bunch of singer songwriters and we're gonna learn how to write songs. And we're going to work on your first album. I'm going to buy tour buses. I'm going to do the Taylor Swift. I love thing. this. And she was like, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on the chord G. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I haven't even gotten to bar chords oh, yet. Today, I was like, oh, we're going to see the Red Clay Strays tonight. And I go, you have to go see them. George, this is one of the, they're such a great band. And I need you to see this band. She was like, okay, Dad, why don't you slow down? Like, I just, I I think it's funny because I, I, I don't know. I just feel like I, there are some parents that want their kids to do the thing they want them to do as opposed to find the thing they want to do. Yes, well, that's for sure. And it's, but the testament is to you is that you and your wife did not go like, "Hey, let's get you headshots." <laughs> right. Let's get you. What? 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 Are, why? Are, what are we doing here? No, we, no time's we, a ticking. Let's get you plugged in. I can get you on SNL. I know Lauren. Uh, that, right. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, I did it to my little sister when she moved to LA. I was like, "You need to get into stand up." My sister, little sister, is the funniest human being that's ever lived. She is way funnier than me. And I said, "You got to get into stand up. I'm going to get you plugged in." I can get you into the clubs. I, I've got good hooks, hookups, and I'm going to get you with the best. I go, you got to meet this girl, Amy Schumer. Like all these, and my little sister's like, fuck that. She got into whatever she does. <laughs> That's my, f- I mean, it's not that I'm not interested. I just don't know what it is. Listen. She got into whatever she does. <laughs> yeah. She does something at Disney. I don't know. <laughs> right now, my, my wife's screaming at the camera going, she's like, Ahead of, yeah, she's, like an she's the head of the thing that does the marketing for the people that do yeah, the producing yeah. of the thing. Yeah, but it, that testament is to to you and your wife for not like for like like almost grabbing him by the back of the head and going walk through this door. When I have it with my other son Matthew, who you know, here's the other thing. How about this? So he always wanted to be a lawyer, super super smart. Um, passes the bar. By the way, I don't wish passing the bar on anybody. Oh. What that kid did to pass that bar. He And I'm not making this up. He studied for six hours every single day for four months. That sounds Literally. like a fucking prison sentence to me. It, and, and it was for him. And he passed. California bar is the hardest bar in the world to pass. And then, you know, met enough people in, in, in the law world to go between AI and what it's going to do to the legal profession and other things. I don't think I want to practice law really? after doing all of that. But he's also got a law degree. That's so, I'm already, can I tell you, I'm already, I'm already helicopter parenting your child. Like I'm going like, I'm like, no, but you have a degree. This is so powerful. Let's get you. I know a lot of movie executives. The movie industry is fucked right now. We're going to get you into the ground level with your degree and what you know in law. God damn. Well, that's exactly what I did. I, oh, okay. Thank God. No, no, that's exactly what I, I was like. But he does love entertainment. So now 
he's he's in VC, he's in finance, yeah. but he comes to finance with a law degree. All the people in finance have finance degrees, but they don't have law degrees. Yeah. So it, it ends up working out, but then the I'm so proud that he had the ability and the courage to go, I know I put all this work in and I know I'm on this path. I know that very few people make it as far as I've made it. I'm going to get off now. I'm going to get off now. Yeah. I'm going to have to take a couple of steps back to start on a different path. But I love that he was able to do that and that we were able to support him in doing that. All right, here's a question I'm wrestling with. Do, are you supposed to leave your kids money when you die? Yes. Okay. I feel like the reason I am who I am today is because no one was going to leave me money. Yes. I feel Same. like that. And so I think, I wonder sometimes. I, know. I, I don't want to, I listen, I don't know. I think George will be fine. I'm not sure what will happen with Isla. She, she said to me the other day, she goes, I just want to be like a, like a kept woman. Wouldn't that be nice, dad? Like if I could just, just marry like a rich guy. And I was like, honey, you're going to be fine. You're there. Someone's going to marry you for your money. She was like, what? what? And I was like, oh, I don't, she goes, I wouldn't want to meet one of those people. And I was like, that's what you just wanted to be. We're gonna be. She, but, uh, but I, I feel like that is the thing, but I know that life's got to be easier with a fucking. But here's the thing. You, you know, already though, the answer to that question, because if your kids didn't have ambition, if they just kind of played PlayStation all day and partied, yeah, you'd know maybe you need to tell them, I lost all the money. Oh, there's, there's, oh you there's, can also there's, just there's, lie there's to no, them. There's, there's no money, right? And my kids have insane, it was my wife, one of the reasons I fell in love with her, craziest work ethic of anybody I've ever met. My work ethic, part fucking supersized and they got double dosed happily. So they're, they, they are grinding. So why shouldn't, why shouldn't they, you know, I don't need to do the, the, the giving pledge. I'm, I made the money. I'm going to do with it what I want. Yeah. Support my kids. Yeah. That's how I'm uh, yeah. good. That makes, okay. Here's another question. I have odd question. Do you, how are you with like keeping things and getting rid of things? Like I saw an mm. Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary on Netflix that he has like the boots that say governor of California. No, no, I've been to his storage space. I've been there. Oh, really? It's insane. So like what? Like, it's like the Smithsonian. What do you have? What do you keep? What do you hold on to? And what, <sighs> what do you have in your house? What do you have in a storage unit? What are you holding on to that you go like, uh, like do you have the saxophone from? I do. Uh, oh, fuck. I have the saxophone from St. Ellis Fire. Let's rock. Let's rock. I, there are certain things you know you're going to want. You, you have a sense of what you're going to, and I, and I like to keep one or two things from something that's been memorable for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and I, and I do, but, but I'm envious of people who take it to the next level, like Arnold. I mean, Arnold has hermetically sealed, like white gloved, organized, like it's uh, the, I, how I imagine the, the Vatican archives are. I don't have that. My Sean, who runs everything for me, can attest. It's it's kind of sitting in a in a in like a storage thing. And what's in this box? Oh, look, these are the uh, original West Wing scripts. You know, so I mean, I keep the, the thing is who's gonna I who's gonna care other than when they have like an open house when I'm dot when I die and people line up and take shit. That's because I don't think my kids are gonna give a shit about any of it. Oh, I my kids won't that. give a fuck about no, any of my stuff. No, none of it. I don't even know what I have that's valuable. Hats. You have hats. I, have I just saw. I have a lot of hats. I have a lot. Of, they're, but those will be thrown away. Not. They're not now. When are they getting no, thrown when, away? When I die. Who's throwing them away? My wife and my daughters. Will Immediately. Like, we don't need any of this shit. Immediately. <laughs> you know what they'll do? They'll have a fucking yard sale. Th exactly. They'll have a garage sale and they'll sell all my shit for pennies. I'm trying to think what I have would be valuable is, I don't even think anything. This You would have maybe the sickest yard. Like I grew up in a neighborhood where they had garage sales. Oh, the yards as they were the best, and you would have the sickest of all time. Well, I, we were we were after fully loaded. We have so much merchandise left over. Yeah, that I was like, we should have a garage sale, and everyone. It's all women that work here. They're like, let's have a garage sale, and then very quickly, the end's like, we don't want everyone to know where we live. Yeah. I was like, oh, good call, good get call. Get an air, bro. You haven't thought this through. Correctly get an Airbnb at all. into a you garage. Get an sale. Airbnb into a garage sale. Are you mental? Oh, I bet I could do a sick garage sale. You could. That's a whole thing. I come to. I want to come to that. I'll I mean, buy. I've got, I've got three guitars there, four guitars there. I don't even believe really Airbnb play the guitar. garage sale. Yeah. Why not? Immediately. Yeah, I should. Yes. 
I'm weird. I could sell. I can make so much money just on weed. Yeah, I have like. Can you sell weed at a garage? Pounds. You sell weed anywhere now. You yeah. sell weed. At well, I'm gonna plan pounds. on selling vodka. I have a, right. I might as well sell my vodka at the garage yeah, exactly. sale. <laughs> I want that lamp. This lamp, I fucking love this lamp. It's like I love my favorite scene from The Jerk, where he, where Steve Martin leaves. He goes, "I don't need anything. I'm not taking except this lamp and and that. I'm taking that, and, and that's all I need. Well, and this. And you too, that. shithead. You're that, coming with me. That's the most amazing <laughs> bit ever. That's that, that would be me. Oh, that's fucking great. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think. There's T-shirts that I have that mean a lot to me. Yes. Like I have a lot of T-shirts. Like I have a, you know, I have a T-shirt and there was, the girls wanted to throw away. It's a late night with David Letterman T-shirt. You had to do the show to get the shirt. And you're I was not like, throwing no. that I go, away. I, I go, no, ladies. This no, is like. That, that's a no-brainer. You're not throwing that away. Yeah. I go, I'm this not- is one day you'll put this on as a, as like, you're going to find one of these in a vintage store for $175 one day. Let me just hold on to it. Oh, I, I had this fight with my wife. I, <clears throat> I have a jersey, a, an actual baseball jersey. Bruce Springsteen, Wembley Stadium, July 4th, 1985. And I'm like, I'm not throwing that away. I'm not throwing that away. No, no. You I've know, got a bunch of signed jerseys. Yeah. God, I'm, I, I, I always wonder like what people hold on to. Because I'm a little nostalgic. Like yeah. I have a lot of stuff from when we shot the movie. I have a lot of stuff that I kept, like the shoes I wore, like the. But no one would ever notice the shoes I wore because they're but Stan Smiths. Know. But I know, but you and know. those women of mine will throw those. Who wants these Stan Smiths? There's mud all over them. It's Serbian mud, ladies. That's right. I smuggled those into the country. This is the leather <clears throat> jacket from Tommy Boy. You have yeah. that? Yeah. Shut the fuck. You probably still fit in it too. I. It's actually big on me because it was the 90s. Everything was huge. Oh, yeah. Remember when everything was huge? You watch Friends. Everything's five sizes too big for everybody. How beautiful is Bo Derek in real person in life? Oh, my God. She and but How about this? I think she's more beautiful now than she was even then. I agree. I totally agree. I totally she's agree. stunning. And John Cobert. Co- 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 Cor- Corbett. John, John Corbett. Corbett. Her... They got married, I believe. So husband. Yeah. The two of them are like Adonis's. Like, this is what humanity should be. We have two friends in uh, Santa Barbara. I'm in Santa Barbara Saturday night. Doing, you are? Doing the, yeah, the Santa Barbara Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was, I was going to tell you today. Uh, yeah, you should come out. I'd love to have you. Yeah. But uh, we have two, we have two, Saturday night, Santa Barbara Bowl. But the, have you played the bowl ever? No. Buddy, it's the most beautiful place you'll... In, other than like Red Rocks, I've done Red Rocks. It's, it's I've done the most beautiful places in the world. So okay, I'm excited. You've done it. It's it, it is. And if you if we get lucky with the weather, oh, shit. it's insane. Really? It's just it's the most beautiful. The Santa Barbara Bowl is a fucking jewel. You should You're come on stage and do something. I will. What do you want to do? What should we do? I'm in. I'm totally in for this. Yeah. We're doing this. The fuck should we do? You should go up and sing opera. And just be like, oh, guys, special guest. Like like Andy Kaufman, like like yeah. com- totally commit. Oh, Should I do the national anthem? Hang on. I can that I can make that happen very seamlessly. Should I do the I national? can make so there's a bit I do. Yes, yes. Well, yes you know, yes, my yes, favorite yes, bit yes, I ever yes, did yes, yes. in on Parks and Rec was saying, Take me out to the ball game. Badly. Yeah. Did you we have to pivot? Did you see the hang on? You yes. So there's a point. You, everyone's gonna see this. I, I do this in some of my shows in the machine. I used to do this joke about going down on my wife, and then I pivot into the national anthem, and you should come out on stage and sing the national anthem with me. Oh, let's do that. Let's do it. I had Jelly Roll do it with me one time. That's great. Had, yeah, it's it's fucking perfect. Oh, it's that's perfect. great. Yeah, it's perfect. We'll do that. That'll be awesome. Did you see the young lady sing the national anthem last night? Okay, l- please tell me what. She's a real person, right? She's a fucking. <laughs> She's a very real person, and she's very talented. But is she? But oh is, yeah, oh yeah. I heard she had a Grammy. Yeah, uh, f- I think she was up for Grammys four times. I mean, she's like extremely talented. Did you see her? T- her was it for, for a spoken word Grammy? No. Did you see her? It was comedy album. Did you see her defense today? No. Hold on. Hold, let me read it verbatim. It's so good. It's so good. I just reposted it. Oh, I have to hear this. By the way, I'm a full fan of hers now. Like I'm, I'm like in. Uh, this, if this is good, I, this could make me a fan. Uh, you're gonna be a fan. Her name is Ingrid Andrus. She posted just this statement on her Instagram today, this morning. 
I'm not going to bullshit y'all. I was drunk last night. I'm checking myself into a facility today to get the help I need. That was not me last night. I apologize to MLB, all the fans, and this country I love. So much for that rendition. I love so much for that rendition. I'll let y'all know how rehab is. I hear it's super fun. XO, Ingrid. <laughs> oh, I'm a huge fan. I'm going to buy her next album. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm a huge fan. Everything, everything. That's it, amazing. That's, Actually, that's amazing. It, it goes back to the Ben Affleck thing. Everything. It's amazing. Every big swing is a big swing. And even when you miss, it's still a big swing that people can go, okay, I get it. Yeah, oh, for sure. You got fucked up. That it shows. It definitely shows. They were destroying her last night. Oh, it was destroying her. It was her. other level. It was, it was, okay, what's worse, hers or Roseanne's? Hmm. Well, they're both bad. I think Roseanne was doing a bit. She was. She was, she was trying to grab her dick and spit. She was doing, well, yeah, and I think the whole thing was a bit, was like, which I, which I don't like because that's no respect for the anthem. Yes. So I, in, in many ways, that makes it worse. So Wait I till think you hers, see how fun singing the national anthem with me is. Because I've done it a few times. Let me ask you a question. How do you, what, what are your flourishes that you put on it? Like, are you, like how much sauce do you put on the anthem? Uh, a here? lot. I, I would think. It's, it's, it's pretty, I, I got to be dead honest with you. It's, it can get a little emotional. Well, let's go. It's really fucking fun. It, I've never sung the national anthem publicly ever. Oh, I've done it maybe 350 times. As a matter of fact, I got asked. Does the crowd end up start doing it? Like, is it become? Oh yeah. I kind of like not know. I'm I'm very big on not knowing things. You do see if you can find. There's got to be. Uh, Vic would be able to tell you right now, but there's got to be a post we did for like, uh, for like one of the vacations of a, of a national or not vacations, but a, one of the uh, holidays that we did where we posted the national anthem. I know we did that. But uh, it's it can get very emotional, and like my dad is not a, my dad's, my dad would is someone who got would was very unnerved by the idea that I would sing the national anthem. He's like, buddy, are you making fun of it? The fuck you doing? Right. Like, hold on, hold on. Like that's not him. And when he saw it, he was like, yeah, I started crying. It's pretty fucking awesome. The real question is, we'll have to work this out. This is why they have rehearsals, man. This is some inside. Oh no, 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 shit. no rehearsals. But, It'll be perfect. Well, what key are you starting? Because you start that oh, fuck. Oh, good, good. That's good. Love. Good. Can, oh. oh yeah. I fucked oh, up. Oh, say can you see? Great. By the, the dawn. Because it the key, gets. I'll tell you the key. Because it gets high. I'll tell you the key, and I can I can say this because I'm off tour. I doubt this will air before that show Saturday, and I probably won't do it on my next tour because I've done it a lot. But w the key was. Uh, getting them to sing it, getting it, it, it is it's I have it's not like a but getting them involved in it is the moment, and then getting them to be involved in the arena, yeah, and become one was the key, and then having them sing the whole song was is like part of the thing. But like when I did it with Jelly, I started it, and he just came up singing the next part. Yeah. The place went nuts. And as soon as he did that, they were like, it, and then it's just everyone just at the top of their lungs. And uh, I'm so in this. I'm so excited about so this. It's so fun. It's so fun. I, I did it. I was, I'll tell you what, Guy Fieri uh, saw me do it. And he came to, he came to our show in, uh, in, in uh, Arizona when we were doing the Super Bowl. And I would do it on stage then. And Guy Fieri came up and he's like, yo, he had a big party, like fucking 30,000 people. And he's like, I'm going to bring up Diplo, but before I bring up Diplo, can you sing the national anthem? I was like, yo, guy, I don't think these people fucking know me. I was like, I'm going to start singing the national anthem. And they're like, this guy sucks. And he's like, no, I know you. Do what you do. So I, he goes, I'm, I would like to bring a guy out to start this party off right with our national anthem, ladies and gentlemen, the machine, Burt Kreischer. And the place went nuts. And I did it the same way I did it. And... 30,000 people are all singing the national anthem. Guy Fieri and I are tearing up and we're like, Diplo's like, I got to follow this? That's <laughs> was, so sick. It was wild. It was wild. All right. Well, we're going to see each other yeah. Saturday. I bring scars. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Let, yeah. We'll figure out the info. I'm so down. Yeah. 100% right. down. Saturday night. Great. I can't wait, man. Are you spending the night or are you going back? We just had this conversation. I kind of want to, I kind of want to spend the night in Santa Barbara. I don't really know Santa Barbara that well. It's great. 
Yeah. It's so great. I told my wife, I was like, let's wake I, up and have brunch somewhere. I could, I could tell you where to go and what to yeah. do. I mean, see if you can get in at the, at the Rosewood. You know, that's the one. To, the Miramar Rosewood's great. The San Ysidro Ranch is super sick and romantic. Oh, here's what I was going to tell you. Two of our friends live in Santa Barbara. And uh, he was a male model and she was a female model. And we were talking, I don't know how, we were talking about something. And I said, oh, we should hit them up and see if they want to come to the show. And Leanne reached out and like, oh, they're coming to the show. And I was like, we haven't seen them in like probably 20 years, maybe 20, like 18 years. And I was like, uh, let's see how they age. They look fucking perfect. Like, I was like, fuck, Leanne, we're going to, we need to get a fucking hair and makeup before they're, we meet them. Yeah, that, you know, once you're, once you're in that model world, you don't, have you ever seen models? Think about it. Have you ever seen a model go completely to pot? I don't, I don't think I have ever. Gonna, no. Uh, and I'll tell you even one further. I said to myself the other day, I, I don't know. I was. I was a little buzzed when I had this thought. So I don't know. I go, well, how beautiful is it to be ugly? To be able to just go do something and no one looks at you. Like it must be tough when you're attractive. Everyone looks at you. You're also famous. So that's a double sword. But like when you're attractive and you're a model, everyone, everyone's got an angle on you. Especially if you're a woman, every guy hits on you. Every guy right. is interested. You never can trust anything. I go, I don't think people appreciate ugly women enough that they get a pretty fucking fair. I am so staying out of this conversation. <laughs> there is no way for me to win. I, look I can't the- win no matter what position I take. <laughs> There's not a position that I could take. I go, it's pretty, it's been pretty nice being like, just like a four. Like just, <laughs> a hard four. A hard four. And then, hard four. Yeah, and everyone's like. Hard four is a good title. Hard four. <laughs> That's a good title for something. Hard four, it is. I'm just saying, oh, that's a really four. good title. Uh, I'm more a soft four. <laughs> soft four. Hard four, soft five. Hard four, soft. Hard four, soft five. There's the title. Hard four, soft five. Dude, you are the fucking best. So I love fun. you to death, man. Say, man. And so I can't wait to text you on Arbor Day. Yeah. You will get a text May from Day, me. Arbor I'm Day. I'm going to highlight every... Every holiday, you when get a text Patoxy from me. Phil comes out on Groundhog's Day, I want to fucking text. Just like six more weeks of winter. Think about you. <laughs> six more weeks of winter. Think about you. Don't pick Love up you. those coats yet, Rob. Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, buddy. Thanks, man. Thank and you. congratulations on season two. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Thanks, buddy. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.